Been like this all day. Captain America, the first Avenger, 2011. It's by the book, perhaps to its own detriment, but despite its overabundance in military film cliches, performances by the likes of Chris Evans and Tommy Lee Jones really make up for it. General Patton has said, wars are fought with weapons, but they are won by men. And the entire supporting cast is great too. It's that you will stay who you are. Not a perfect soldier, but a good man. Not a ton of risks, but hey, it's higher on the list than Multiverse of Madness, so what does that tell you? Red Skull played by the great and powerful Hugo Weaving gets a pass for this boring villain, having already proved himself behind a cooler mask. The George Lopez Syndrome special effects that shrink Chris Evans down to be a weird skinny guy with a big head work well enough, but once that Uncanny Valley shit is out of the way, the movie feels pretty grounded. He's a great character, played by a great actor, directed by a talented director in Joe Johnston, who you may know from such films as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jumanji, and Jurassic Park 3. Alan. But this might be his most memorable moment. Gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I had a date. Captain America, Winter Soldier, 2014. Quite possibly the best film out of the entire series, just not my personal favorite at this time. This is another one I was lucky enough to see in theaters with some fellow filmmakers. An incredible first watch. The elevator scene is iconic. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? The spy thriller tone is levels above anything else we've seen in the MCU. Chris Evans gives his best performance yet, and Samuel L. Jackson is the coolest we've seen him in universe, before the whole catastrophe. It's a great sequel in that it not only works well on its own, but it also makes the first movie even better by addition. It's paced perfectly, packed with great moments like... On your left. Uh-huh, on my left. Got it. Don't say it. Don't you say on it. On your left. Come on! Sam Wilson is a seamless addition to the MCU, and Clarence is perfectly cast. And Robert Redford brings class and respectability to the film as Alexander Pierce. It saved the lives of a dozen political officers, including my daughter. So you gave him a promotion. I've never had any cause to regret it. The surprise return of Bucky is handled very well, and they manage to get some nice beats in there between the two boys despite a wall of Manchurian candidate mind control keeping them apart. This is as close to a perfect movie as there is in this stretch of 34 films, and the small nitpicks are just that. I don't love the whole trying to bang two different generations of women in the same family, but I get it. This is definitely the most grounded film in the series. If you were trying to introduce a non-superhero fan to the MCU, this would be the one to start with. Or... Captain America, Civil War, 2016. I saw this movie on a plane on the way back from a funeral, and it still made top five. This is where the Russo brothers cemented themselves as the goats of the MCU. No, the introduction to Spider-Man was incredibly exciting. On the roof! Hey everyone. The matchups and team-ups all made logical sense and were clearly very well thought out. You understand both sides of the battle and why each protagonist has chosen his side. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. I think it's a perfect example of a well-executed character arc spanning across multiple movies. When we first meet Cap, sure, he's a plucky, do-good puppet for the American government, but after the events of Winter Soldier, Cap no longer trusts his government, and Tony, who traditionally has gone against Big Brother, was terrified by his failings in Age of Ultron, and now thinks the government needs to step in to keep them in check. I'm doing what has to be done to stave off something worse. You keep telling yourself that. It's the most political movie in the MCU without ever stepping into actual American politics. Whew. And to top Spider-Man, we get to meet another new MCU character and legend of the comics in Black Panther. Tell that to the dead. The living are not done with you yet. This guy is easily the most badass character in the film, and the suit looks better than it ever was again. Ant-Man meeting the Avengers is a fun bit. I'm shaking your hand too long. Wow, this is awesome. Captain America, 
I know you too. You're great. And the giant man scene is great stuff. The movie contains some of the best dialogue in the MCU, all on a TV screen small enough to fit on the back of a plane seat. And that's when I learned the true power of movies. Thank <laughs> you.